Tiffany, I'm extremely disappointed in you. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 most awkward reality TV moments. I guess it's a good moment for that. It's okay that I'm doing For this list, we're looking at the most uncomfortable and cringeworthy moments ever aired on reality TV. We'll be focusing mainly on structured reality and narrative-driven competition shows instead of game shows and competitions with a live component like American Idol. Did your favorite awkward moment make the list? Sound off in the comments below. Number 20. Raj Helps Himself – Hell's Kitchen This personal chef from Queens, New York lasted only three episodes into the eighth season of Hell's Kitchen, and even that seemed like too, too many. I tried to clear my head by sticking my head in the refrigerator. From his bumbling during dinner service to his clashes with his more experienced teammates, let's just say no one was placing their bets on Raj to win. But his most awkward moment came in his elimination episode. While his team struggled to send out even one entree, Raj was eating the leftovers. No, I mean, I just took a quick little bite. It's really tasty. Even when his teammates asked him not to, he just couldn't help himself. Clearly, their dishes were too good to resist. Chef Ramsay was not amused, but what else is new? How could Chef Ramsay blame me for eating this delicious food? It's fantastic. Number 19. Greg Leaves Dinner – First Dates this popular British reality show takes place in a restaurant where two strangers would meet for a blind date. You hungry? I'm all right, I'm all right. As if first dates weren't awkward enough for the Brits, they had to add cameras and potential humiliation in front of millions to the mix. In this memorable episode, Greg got dumped by his blind date John before the main course even arrived. You seem to get along, but I just don't have that, that connection with you. Apparently, John didn't find Greg attractive at all and wasted no time in letting him know that. Despite Greg's disappointment, it's clear he dodged a bullet. Do you want to pay your half of the bill now? Aye, please. Yeah. When he gave the show a second go, he actually found a husband. Number 18. Wheels of Cheese – The Amazing Race If the idea of desperate people rolling wheels of cheese down a hill seems ridiculous to you, you'd be correct. There's the shit. Okay, let's go. Let's get the cheese. Oh, jeez. On the 14th season of The Amazing Race, Contestants were tasked with transporting heavy hunks of cheese down a steep hill while drunk Swiss men laughed at them. It's a very specific anxiety fever dream of a challenge. From the jaunty little tune playing over the soundtrack to the wheels of cheese rolling down the hill at killing speed, everything here is just so bizarre. Oh, he just ate it. <laughs> it's almost hard to believe that this was what stands between these people and a million dollars. Don't let it cheese it. Number 17. Chicken or Fish – Newlyweds – Nick and Jessica Long before he hosted Love is Blind, Nick Lachey and then-wife, singer and fashion designer Jessica Simpson, let their own love story play out for millions of viewers. You always hear like, the first year of marriage is, you know, the toughest, and I think especially for people who haven't lived together. The two were just like any other couple trying to answer life's big questions. How many kids should we have? How should we spend our money? Is tuna fish or is it chicken? Is this chicken what I have or is this fish? I know it's tuna, but it, it says chicken by the sea. Jessica's adorable confusion over the brand name Chicken of the Sea lives on in reality TV infamy. What makes it even more awkward is that instead of laughing or helping her out, Lachey just stares at her dumbfounded. The interaction would be replayed and dissected for years to come, and it's arguably one of reality TV's first viral moments. You know, because a lot of people eat tuna, it's like a lot of people eat chicken, so it's like the chicken of the sea. Okay, I understand that. I was, I read it wrong. <laughs> Number 16. Utica's Roast – RuPaul's Drag Race We've seen our fair share of bad stand-up routines on RuPaul's Drag Race. Okay, okay, okay. Season 13's Utica Queen bombed her comedy set so hard that the judges started reading her during the challenge. Her jokes, such as they were, got only pity laughs for most of her routine. But when Utica made the mistake of going after guest judge Lonnie Love, the roaster became the roastee. It's just as hard as to swallow as Lonnie Love's comedy career. <laughs> To make things even worse, this happened not once, but twice. Utica's next joke about RuPaul wasn't nearly as funny as Ru's wordless response. You know you messed up when the people you're roasting get the bigger laugh. I don't even know how you crawl out of that. Number 15. Fake Tears – Love is Blind 
Viewers could not believe what they were seeing when they tuned into the anticipated third season of Netflix's Love is Blind. I just want to thank you for being so kind, but in the real world, I'm looking for something else. After participant Nancy turned down Andrew's proposal of marriage, he told the producers he was hurt. Then, with the cameras still rolling, he applied some eye drops and claimed that Nancy's rejection had brought him to tears. Oh, hang on. My bad. It's just too much. Maybe he assumed they'd work some magic in editing to make the eye drops and his alleged tears appear genuine. But no, the show left all of this in for everyone to see. The audience may have been stunned, but his castmates were not surprised at all. I think it was a complete depiction of what I was feeling through a wall. I was like, this, this guy's like up to something. Number 14, David's Dead, Celebrity Big Brother. David Bowie's death sent unintended shockwaves through the Celebrity Big Brother house. Bowie's grieving ex-wife Angie decided to tell fellow housemate Tiffany Pollard the news. You can't say a word. Nothing. David's dead. No, he's not. If there's one thing Tiffany New York Pollard is known for, it's keeping things calm, cool, and collected. So naturally, she began wailing like a widow at a funeral. Turns out Pollard thought Angie met their fellow housemate David Guest had died. They told me that David is dead. The miscommunication sent a panic through the house. In the span of a few minutes, Pollard experienced the entire spectrum of human emotion, but everyone else was just along for the ride. As Angie said, it was a mess. My pride made me not handle it correctly, and yet again it developed into another drama. Number 13, Hottie's Chicken, Flavor of Love. Shatar Taylor, also known as Hottie, is an undersung hero of the Flavor of Love franchise. However, Hottie's most awkward moments were not with her castmates, but with food. Can we call it, uh, like, call and have it catered or no? No. When she and her fellow Flavor of Love contestants are tasked with cooking up some fried chicken, Hottie has an ingenious idea. But this should be a good recipe. I think she'll like it. She proceeds to stab raw vegetables and other condiments into a whole uncooked chicken and put it in the microwave. Monique may not have appreciated her apple, but at least it was edible. The chicken she presented to Flavor Flav and his mother was not only unsavory, it actually might be a crime to serve that in some states. I just want to say, whoever number eight was, that wasn't serious, was you? Number 12, Raquel or Ariana, Vanderpump Rules. Breakups are always messy, and those brought about by infidelity are a lot messier. Add the cameras and you've got epic reality television. So I haven't said sorry for what you actually did. Season 10 of Vanderpump Rules brought to light the affair that brought down one of the show's most enduring couples, Tom Sandoval and Ariana Maddox. I don't know how it happened, it just, it happened. Sandoval's affair with Maddox's friend Raquel Levis made it to air on the season finale. The two laid out a timeline of their relationship for the benefit of the cameras, during which Tom accidentally called Raquel by Ariana's name. Dude, you're sleeping on Ariana, you're an idiot. Like, she's amazing. You or, just sorry, call me Ariana. This would be awkward at any time. But right in the middle of the two establishing their relationship amid his breakup, it is cringe to the nth degree. Number 11, Ashley gets roasted, The Bachelorette. Roasts can be fun, right? Right? Is this thing on? When season seven Bachelorette Ashley A. Bear asked her suitors to roast her, she was clearly asking for trouble. Maybe I'll learn something about some of the guys today. I'm excited for that. Ashley was a good sport at first, taking the repeated jokes about the size of her chest. But a joke would be one thing. Most of these guys just decided to say the meanest thing they could think up without even attempting to pass them off as punchlines. They say one man's trash is another man's treasure. <laughs> Ashley was reduced to tears when her clear favorite contestant expressed that he and many of his castmates were disappointed that she was the season's bachelorette. With potential husbands like these, who needs enemies? No rose for me. No, 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 no rose for me. This was a roast that wasn't compliment Ashley night. Number 10, Rob accidentally takes a male enhancement pill, keeping up with the Kardashians. This is embarrassing on so many levels. After Chris obtains <clears throat> enhancement pills from her friend, she slips some into her partner's coffee. However, her son Rob intercepts the second cup, resulting in a two-hour erection and a hospital visit. Can you cough for me? <coughs> Rob's parents then visit him in the hospital, resulting in a supremely embarrassed Rob sporting an erection around them. 
If that wasn't humiliating enough, Chris is forced to admit to her family that she had slipped him the erection pills. This isn't easy for me to say. Just imagine being Rob here, awkwardly sporting an erection in front of your parents while they are discussing their sex lives and the use of enhancement pills. Number 9. Baby Madonna, Toddlers and Tiaras Smart, Mia. To be honest, we could probably put every episode and segment of Toddlers and Tiaras on this list, but arguably no moment was more controversial than Baby Madonna. Uh, the Madonna impersonator in question is Mia, a two-year-old beauty pageant competitor. These contests are problematic enough as is, but her outfit is even more egregious. A gold bustier complete with cone breasts modeled after sex icon Madonna. <laughs> You know, the outfit she wore while she famously feigned touching herself during the Blonde Ambition tour? It's not something you ever put a two-year-old in, and it was met with fierce backlash by the mainstream media. This was not just awkward, it was reprehensible. Mia probably has been in about 20 pageants or so. I'd say out of those 20, she has won about 18 or so. Usually she always comes home with a crown. Number 8. Snooki is punched in the face, Jersey Shore. Snooki being punched directly in the face is now reality TV history, and it's every bit as iconic and awkward today as it was back in 2009. In the show's first season, Snooki was brutally punched in the face by high school teacher Brad Farrow, who was later fired from his position at Queens Community High School. The punch itself was widely shared across the internet and made Snooki a national celebrity. MTV later pulled the footage and called it, quote, extremely disturbing, and made Jersey Shore and Snooki household names. Funny how that works, huh? Number 7. Go Big or Go Home – Vanderpump Rules I'm so excited about massaging my boobs afterwards. <laughs> oh yeah, because you have to massage the, yeah. <laughs> Reality TV usually centers on an egocentric cast, but rarely are the stars as overtly vain and shallow as this. In the fourth season of Vanderpump Rules, Jax admitted that he was falling back into bad habits. To perk himself up, he convinces his girlfriend Brittany to get a full D breast enlargement. Wait, how big are you She's gonna getting triple go? D's. A full C, small D. I'm not yeah. being inappropriate, but we discussed we like Sarah. While she was considering a C cup, Jax managed to convince her to go bigger, telling her in an incredibly obnoxious manner, it's not just for you, it's for me. If I'm gonna help finance this, I want them how I want them. Worse, he later complained about helping her after the surgery, calling his help, quote, serious boyfriend duty. It made for really awkward TV, and it just made us feel bad for poor Britney. Listen, I don't want porn star boobs. I don't like that. Natural teardrop, naturalness. Number 6. Aviva takes off her prosthetic leg, the Real Housewives of New York City. I find it, I find it very, very, very hurtful that you don't believe that I have asthma. This show is full of ridiculous and childish behavior, but this is on another level. After Aviva's co-stars accused her of embellishing her asthma, Aviva responded in the intelligent and mature way of slamming her prosthetic leg on the table. The only thing that is artificial or fake about me Everyone was understandably shocked. It's a weird move. However, it seems as if Aviva was fully aware of how inappropriate the action was, as she later told HuffPost Live that she did it for the drama. Everything else is real. Everything else. Everything else is real. In her own words, quote, Would I ever do that in real life? No. But there were several cameras around me, and was I thinking about making a show and being entertaining? Yes, absolutely. Here. Go ahead. Number 5. Asia's Butterfly Fail – RuPaul's Drag Race <laughs> If you're gonna attempt some dramatic flourish on stage, best to make sure it actually works before the big moment. On the season 10 finale of RuPaul's Drag Race, Asia had planned to release some butterflies from her chest and wrist compartments during her lip sync in a quote, amazing display of optimism. I don't need nothing. <laughs> Unfortunately, the butterflies were feeling a little lazy that day. Most of them simply stayed put in their little compartment, while others just fell to the floor after Asia forced them out. The horrified and hilarious reactions from the audience say it all. This fail instantly became a meme, and Asia was rightfully eliminated from the competition, placing fourth. 
Number 4. Tiffany vs. Tyra, America's Next Top Model Is there anything more awkward than watching two people scream at each other? Well, in this case, it's one person screaming while the other sheepishly takes it, but the point still stands. Be quiet! That's what is I'm wrong with you! Head, but you're Stop not it! You I have never in my life yelled at a girl like this! After Tiffany was eliminated from the fourth cycle, Tyra criticized her seemingly careless attitude and for treating the competition like a joke. I was rooting for you! We were all rooting for you! How dare you! Learn something from this! And when Tiffany fought back by explaining her side, Tyra exploded in a scene right out of an Oscar-winning drama, complete with tear-choked lines like, quote, I was rooting for you, and, quote, you take responsibility for yourself. We never saw Tyra explode like this, and it made for really uncomfortable viewing. You roll in your eyes and you act like this because you've heard it all before. You've heard it all before. You don't know where the hell I come from. You have no idea what I've been through. But I'm not a victim. I grow from it and I learn. Number three, why Mohammed has stopped having sex with Danielle, 90 Day Fiance. Was there any intimacy after the wedding at all? After the wedding? Yes. There was, but we've started facing a problem. You see, this is what's wrong with reality TV. Sure, we've had some fun before this, but the idea of cameras capturing such a personal and intimate conversation like this is just wrong. It makes us feel voyeuristic and dirty. Here we see Muhammad and Danielle talking about their sex life, or lack thereof, and how Danielle threatened to have Muhammad deported if he didn't sleep with her. She was, like, be like, sitting on the floor, crying, screaming in front of her teenagers, I want my sex tonight. If you don't give me my sex tonight, I will, I will, I will call the immigration, I will get you deported. Danielle further explains that Muhammad has told people that she smells, she does, says Muhammad, and that she's, quote, peed on him, prompting many bewildered looks. Everyone is clearly uncomfortable talking about this, and we are just as uncomfortable watching it. He has told people that I smell and I do. peed on him. <gasps> Number two, Josh and Emily's kiss. Love at first kiss. I'm Josh, I'm 27. No pressure. And today I'm gonna kiss a girl for the first time. <sighs> Many of us have experienced awkward first kisses, but the next time you're lying awake and thinking about your god-awful first romantic impression, take comfort in knowing that it couldn't have been any worse than Josh's. Hi. Hello. Hey. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. The whole concept of this show is having complete strangers kiss each other and seeing if anything sparks. Nothing sparked between Josh and Emily. Imagine that. We watched in horror as inexperienced kisser Josh approached Emily with a really creepy and uncomfortable smile before lightly smooching her cheek, weirdly embracing her, and walking away. We're forced to watch this through our fingers because this is just too much. Anyone who didn't physically recoil from this wins one Ms. Mojo point. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Jason dumps Melissa, The Bachelor. You know, I came here to find, in my whole life, find somebody like Melissa. Mm -hmm. And since this all ended, <sighs> things have been different. Well, you don't see this every day on The Bachelor, that's for sure. Though it was shot a month and a half after the filming of the main episodes, the After the Final Rose special aired right after the season finale was broadcast. Are you going to end this tonight? I have to. Let's bring her out. It followed Jason as he dumped winner Melissa to get with Molly. This is another instance of cameras capturing a moment of incredible intimacy, and it again made us feel terrible for gobbling it up as entertainment. You're such a bastard. I wish more than anything that last day you would have just let me go instead of doing this to me. I'm so mad at you. How would you feel if your fiancé dumped you on national television in front of about 15 million people? Luckily, everything worked out for Melissa, as she married Ty Strickland and had three children with him. But in the moment, our hearts were shattered for the poor woman. Melissa was out here earlier, and, um... I ended things with her because I haven't been able to stop thinking about you. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.